First of all, this is an emergency upload in response to Matt from the Linux cast. Uh, so I've been trying repeatedly for basically most of the entire year is to actually get Arch Linux installed on my system of where it has led me to constant issues. So as a result, I, I make a comment on it in a private chat that I'm in with him as well as the other hosts from the Linux cast of where it's just like, yeah, I tried Arch, it failed, I, I'm using something else. So uh, then Matt just randomly comes out with this message of where he says, I challenge you to use a distro for six months. Uh, so give me a second here. I actually, I actually just installed a distro. So give me just a second here and, uh, let me pull up this chat here and let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Is there anything sensitive in here? Okay. Okay. So for the sake of of an audit i'm going to live switch the us the uh, obs scene here and screen capture uh this screen yes this is the right screen uh this is the discord chat okay i'm installing zero g to see if an arch based distro will actually work for me nope arch continues to hate me i'm swapping back to debian because i was using debian prior to this and then he's just like i challenge you to use the distro for six months I respond saying, hey, I paid you to use Sway, and then I paid Zany to use Dvorak, of which I think he actually did a live stream of. Uh, and I don't know if he actually used Dvorak for the amount of time that I paid him to. I think I paid him something like $200. Zany, are you still using Dvorak? I don't know. But then he's just like, yeah, this is a challenge for you. You'd miss hopping too much. Uh, honestly, I'm not as much of a distro hopper as he thinks I am. And like, what do I get after six months? And he's just like, you get to prove me wrong. Okay, challenge accepted right there. But of course, then then we get into like uh, dealing with a little bit of the Arch chatter here. Uh, so in the event that you guys are curious, the reason why I can't get Arch Linux working for me is that Arch Linux, for some reason, I can, I have a working network connection where I can ping and access websites. However, however, Pacman, the package manager for Archlink, says, you know, it's pretty important. Will do nothing but spit out 404 errors for any repository I set. I have cha I have changed the mirror list several times, verified the bet that the mirrors are working because the Arch live environment, Pacman works perfectly fine. But once the system is installed, Pacman refuses to work. So the only way I would be able to, you know, Use Pac-Man in my Archbase distribution is to lo log into it to a uh, live environment, ch root into my system, and, and uh, without well, actually not not using ch root, but you know mount my system, and then use Pac-Man with a special flag to tell it to use an to use use another root source of Pac a a the uh, su the sub roots package. Uh, this is exactly how the pack strap command works for Arch Linux. If you've ever ever actually ma manually installed it, it uh, and uh, it's documented in like the code, but it tells you what route that you want to install things into, <laughs> and uh, that's what I would have to be forced to do. <laughs> Which you know that just doesn't work. But anyways, we get chatting a little bit on this here and uh, verifying that things are working, and of course you know he's just like, did you ask the Arch forums or Reddit? And I'm like, yeah, I did. Guess what I got? RTFM. Helpful as always. Thanks for the troubleshooting, Arch, guys. You're great. But, yeah, you know, it's just like... And then he's just like... I'm going to do a six-month Linux challenge, too. And I'm like... Then I'll make a video about it and maybe make it a community thing. And I'm like, well, tell you what. Let's do a mandatory NeoFetch in every single video. So, as a result, every live stream that Matt participates in, and or myself, or any video that we post, we the very first thing that we have to do is open a terminal and enter NeoFetch. And of course, we have to swear that all of our bash, bash or ZSH or fish shell configurations or whatever it is are vettable by everybody. So we have to keep our dot files in an updated public repository. Easy enough for me because, you know, I have a git link in, in the description of the video, or I say I'm supposed to, it's supposed to automatically generate into there, we'll find out. 
But if it's not there, I will put it there, and you will see that I have updated my bash config. But anyways, now uh, we get talking here. He's just like, what distro should I choose? Don't say Gen 2 or LFS. Obviously not Fedora. That'd be redundant. Hmm. You want me to be spicy? Give me a couple options so I could choose. Okay, so the very first distro that I picked for him is Red Hat on the desktop. Uh, I obviously expected him to say no. And so it's just like, okay, so I don't think he's going to run Red Hat. And then I listed out Endless OS, the full package. You know, that distro that ships like the 15 gigabit ISO. I should probably put my camera up on this scene, shouldn't I? Uh, just editing this video live. There we go. Uh, make myself smaller. But anyways, uh, you know, and uh, then I say, Open Mandriva, how's, how's that? Uh, Void Linux, OpenSUSE Micro OS, the Ubuntu Christian Edition, Red Core Linux, or a or you know a community poll vote because you know I honestly think that the community would love to pick Matt's distro for him and not just me. And then you know we get talking about endless OS a little bit. You know it seems to trigger his interest a little bit, but ultimately he says no. And then he asks about Micro OS, and I'm like, well you know Micro OS is actually in like its third or fourth release candidate at this point, and it's it's not immutable, so. It's pseudo immutable because, you know, it actually works kind of uniquely. I don't think I posted a video on it, but I did use it for a very short amount of time. And I think it's still actually the installed operating system on my System76 Lima Pro. Uh, or otherwise known as the dedicated the uh, dedicated uh, Emacs machine 1.0 because I've switched to the Pinebook as the daily driver laptop. Video on that coming soon, by the way. But then I mentioned, why not open Mandriva? And he's just like, ah, those, are, those were just the two that I narrowed it down to. And I'm like, okay, not giving open Mandriva the credit that open Mandriva deserves. I understand. And then, it, you know, he tossed out Void because, you know, he's already using Void on a system. And he's going to be posting a video on that. No uh, spoilers, no spoiler. Too late. I'm like, yeah, Zany should join in the fun too. But of course, he's on a cruise right now, so he won't be able to see. And then Matt posts this video. And, I'm, well, not this video, but like this, not this video, uh, this video here of where, you know, he's talking about this and he mentions me. So now I have to make a response video. So Matt, at the start of every year, one of your videos for the next six months, you have to open a terminal and enter NeoFetch. And if we call bullshit in the comments in your next video, you have to open up your bash config after, of course, the NeoFetch and, ver and show proof that the NeoFetch that you entered was, in fact, a real NeoFetch and not alias to anything. So you have to do that. Any live streams that you participate in, this includes the podcast. You and I both have to show our screens and put out the NeoFetch. We're only going to do it one time, though, in, in the Linux Cast live streams, because, you know, those are supposed to be, like, pseudo proper and uh, stuff like that. Like, it gets edited. Who the hell edits a live stream? I don't know, but apparently Matt does. But anyways, uh, we, we, have to do, we have to do that. So, Matt... You and I, we got to do this. We're going to be serious. Uh, if you're going to be participating, Matt did create a Discord channel. Uh, let me find it in my list of servers here. He, he created this, and I'm going to put in like all of the details in, in this. Uh, hopefully, I'm the first one to actually post it, because you know, I'm probably going to write this, rewrite it a couple times here. He was like, yeah, this is my distro for the challenge. It's going to be Debian stable, but this is all the things that I'm going to, going to hold myself to. But, you know, I, I understand it's not a Thursday. Well, it is Thursday, but, you know, it's awful late for me to be posting a video. But anyways, guys. Do you, do you think I can legitimately run Debian Stable for six months in a row? Because, you know, there was a point in time where I ran Debian Stable for six years in a row. I think I could do six months. The only problem with Debian Stable is I have this blue box behind me. I should probably go grab it.
this was actually a very spur of the moment video with like no actual uh, planning to it whatsoever. Not that any of my videos actually get planned. But let me get, grab the box. There's one problem. Yeah, and uh, that is this pretty blue box. It's real. Right there. It's in fact right here in my hands. An actual Arc GPU. Says it in everything. Has the RGB. It lights up very prettily, prettily along here. Uh, it is stock blue colors. It's not rainbow puke at all whatsoever. It's actually a very beautiful card when you know it's a, it actually uh, it's honestly a very beautiful graphics card. However, I'm running Debian stable. That means that I'm running kernel 5.10. <laughs> and I'm, that means that I have no driver support whatsoever for this thing. <laughs> but anyways, guys, I guess I'm going to be putting that card in the server after all. And uh, we'll see if we can do something with it. Because, you know, I'd like to be able to use this thing that I purchased in the next six months. Or, you know, I might just have to wait till six months later and wait for, like, driver support to be in the 6.2 kernel to be refined because you know i kind of want to run it on 6.2 on day one i'm patiently waiting for that kernel version because you know i really want to use it maybe 6.2 is going to be in backports maybe i don't know what the current backports version actually is i think it's like 6.0 <laughs> but we'll find out but anyways guys i'm using debian right so uh this debian desktop here it's kde so not only am i using debian but i'm also using kde i was I was going to be doing the window manager videos. Uh, I promised I was going to be uh, picking up, picking back up the window manager project. I guess I can still do that, but I also kind of want to see how long I can last on KDE. Uh, you can already see that uh, I've themed KDE with the world's greatest theme, Arc Dark. Yeah, and uh, in response to uh, my own set of rules. I've already installed NeoFetch. Let's run the mandatory NeoFetch. You can see that I'm running Debian. Uh, let's Vim into my bash RC, which I think is still the, well, I don't even have Vim on this system yet. That's how new this is. So you can see uh, through my bash RC here, it's literally just the stock Debian bash config, right? It's stock. So, uh, we're going to stick to this for six months. Matt, this is my challenge to you. You get, you got to do the NeoFetch thing. At the end of the six months, Matt, uh, I'm going to send you 50 bucks. I don't know what you're going to send me, but I'll send you 50 bucks. We'll make this a gamble. Or And, uh, you know... If both of us wind up distro hopping within six months, I'll come to you and I'll buy you a steak. You live in Michigan. I've never been to Michigan because, you know, I live in Ohio. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later.